Congratulations on the purchase of your well water filter and salt base water softener. Your system has three main components. The well water filter uses air injecting oxidation to remove iron, sulfur, and manganese from your water. The water is then softened by using ion exchange. And the salt from the brine tank will regularly regenerate the media in the softening system. This video will walk you through the installation process. The system will consist of the following parts. The well water filter, which is labeled tank 1. The softener tank, which is labeled tank 2. Two 50-foot lengths of drain line. Four MNPT fittings. Two bypass valves. The electronic head for the softener tank. The electronic head for the well water filter. Power supplies for each of the electronic heads and two hose clamps for the drain lines from each electronic head. The supplies recommended to complete the install will include three 1-inch corrugated water connectors, a 1-inch by 3-inch long PVC nipple, one roll of plumber's tape, two threaded adapters for your pre-plumb, a 1-inch PVC shutoff valve, and some zip ties. As was just mentioned, you will be receiving two different tanks with your system to ensure that you don't mix them up. They are each numbered on their cap. Tank number one is a well water filter and tank number two is a salt based water softener. We will begin by setting up tank number one. Your well water filter comes shipped with a jacket. To install it, simply wrap it around the tank and then you will zip it up around the tank. Also note that the jacket can be placed after the installation has been completed. The electronic head for the well water filter will now be installed. Begin by unscrewing the cap at the top of the tank. The blue cap on the pipe inside the tank will also need to be removed. Both caps can be discarded. Before attaching the electronic head for the well water filter, it's important to identify the correct one. The head will have a label identifying it as the well system. You will also notice piping just below the correct head. There is a small circular opening on the bottom of the electronic head that will align with the pipe that's inside of the tank. Once aligned, go ahead and set the electronic head onto the pipe. You will need to apply downward pressure to get the threads to catch. Thread the electronic head clockwise and continue turning it until it's fully tightened. The tank will now be rotated to gain access to the connections on the back side of the head. The bypass valve will now be attached. It has rubberized fittings that will fit into the connections on the tank head. Press the bypass valve in the position and then fully tighten both of the connectors to seat it in position. The MNPT fittings will now be connected to the other side of the bypass. They have a rubberized connector that will insert into the opening and a fastener that will also need to be fully tightened. Repeat this with both of the MNPT fittings. Apply plumber's tape to the threads on the other end of the fittings. You will now proceed with setting up tank number two, which is a softening tank. This tank also has a cap that needs to be unscrewed before you can attach the head. There is a smaller blue cap on the inside that also needs to be removed. Both caps can be discarded. The electronic head for the softening tank has tubing that's pre-installed. The head will also be labeled as a salt softening system. The electronic tank head will now be attached. The pipe on the inside of the tank will align with the opening on the bottom of the head. Once aligned, apply downward pressure and thread it clockwise until it's fully tightened. The blue bypass valves will now be attached. Insert the rubberized connectors into the openings and push it in place. The fittings on each end will then be threaded to secure the bypass valve in position. Be sure they're fully tightened to avoid any leaks. The two provided MNPT fittings will now be connected to the other side of the bypass valve. Apply plumber's tape to the other end of both of these connections. The next step of the install will require you to tap it to your pre-plumb. Please be sure that the water is turned off to the home before completing the next steps. 
Your goal is to install threaded adapters onto the inlet and outlet of the pre-plumb. And it's also suggested that you install them so that they're pointing towards your tank. Position the well water filter, or tank number one, with its connections facing back. Identify the connector with the incoming water supply and apply plumber's tape to the threads. The PVC shutoff valve will then be installed onto that connection. Please ensure that it's tightened as much as possible to avoid any leaks. Apply plumber's tape to the PVC nipple. It will be installed on the other side of the PVC shutoff valve. Use a wrench or a pair of pliers to fully tighten it in place. A 1 inch corrugated pipe will now be installed on the other side of the PVC nipple. Also ensure that it's fully tightened. Bend the corrugated pipe so that the connection is facing towards the inlet on the back of the electronic head. Before making the connection, be sure that you're connecting to the inlet and not the outlet of the tank. Thread the corrugated pipe onto the inlet and then fully tighten it. There is a drain valve with a compression connection on the left hand side of the tank head. A drain line will need to be attached to it. For easy installation, it's easier to remove the compression connection by removing the blue tab that's behind the valve. From there, the valve can be pulled off. Slide one of the provided hose clamps over the drain line. Press the barbed end of the valve onto the drain line and push it all the way in until it's fully seated. Position the hose clamp over the connection and begin to tighten it. Before fully tightening it, make sure that it's aligned as shown here to avoid it getting in the way when you reconnect the valve. Reattach the valve with the connected drain line and be sure that it pushes in all the way. The blue lock tab will now be reinstalled onto the back of the valve to hold it in place. Run the drain line towards your drain and then trim away the excess. Be sure to leave yourself a little slack. Small holes and some zip ties can be used to secure the drain line into the drain to ensure it doesn't pull out. Insert a pair of zip ties into the holes as shown here. Then push them inward to create loops. The drain line will then be placed into the drain and fed through the loops. Tighten up both of the zip ties to secure the drain line in position. And to keep it neat, the excess can be trimmed away. A corrugated water connector will now be connected to the outgoing side on the well water filter. Thread the connection and then make sure that it's fully tightened. The softening tank will now be introduced. Position it so the connections are facing back. The connection from the outgoing side on the well water filter will now be connected to the incoming side on the water softening tank. Thread the connection and then fully tighten it. A drain line will also need to be installed on the softening tank. Just like the previous head, remove the blue tab to remove the compression connection. Slip the other hose clamp over the drain line. Press the connector all the way in to the provided drain line. The hose clamp will then be tightened around the hose in the compression connection to secure it in place. The valve with the drain line can now be reinstalled onto the side of the tank. Be sure that it's fully seated. Reinstall the blue locking tab to secure it in place. Measure the length of the drain line to the drain and then trim away the excess. Go ahead and insert the line temporarily into the drain. A corrugated water connector will now be threaded onto the other side of the pre-plumb. This is the side that's leading into the home. Thread the connection and then make sure that it's fully tightened. The corrugated water connector will then be connected to the outcoming side from the water softening tank. Thread the connection and then make sure it's fully tightened. The brine tank can now be introduced. Remove the lid from the tank and set it aside. Drain line will need to be pressed onto the compression connection on the side of the tank. The zip ties that are holding the tubing coming out from the electronic head can now be cut away. Remove the white cap from the brine well inside the tank. Insert the tubing from the electronic head into the small opening that's on the side of the brine tank. It will be inserted into a connection that's inside of the brine well. 
Once the tubing is aligned, press it in place to lock it. The white cap can then be replaced to the top of the brine well. The brine tank will need to be positioned near the drain. Once the brine tank is in its permanent location, you can go ahead and fill it with salt pellets. The tank has a capacity for four to five bags. Once filled, replace the lid. The drain line for the brine tank can now be set up. Guide it towards the drain and trim away the excess. The drain lines can now be secured. Go ahead and slide out the drain line from the softening tank. Once again, zip ties can be used to secure the drain lines in place. Push the zip ties in to create two loops inside the drain. The drain line from the water softener will then be inserted into one of those loops. The drain line from the brine tank will be inserted into the other loop. Both zip ties can then be tightened up to secure the lines in place. Please note that none of the drain lines should have any pinches or kinks in them or you may experience issues with drainage. At this point, all of the connections have been made, but the system is not ready to use just yet. The power adapter for each head will need to be installed. They will plug into the power port on each head that's furthest to the left. Plug a power adapter into each head and then plug the power supplies into a nearby power outlet. A 9 volt backup battery should be installed into each head as well. Locate the battery connector beneath the display and then plug a 9 volt battery into it. Rest the battery into the tray that's beneath the display and the cover for the electronic head can be replaced. Repeat these steps with both heads. At this point, you are now ready to test your system. While the water is still turned off to the home, turn on the cold water all the way in one of the bathtubs. Ensure the shutoff valve to the system is in the off position. Also ensure that the valves on both tanks are set to bypass. Turn on the water main to the home and inspect your shutoff valve for any leaks. If no leaks are detected, go ahead and open the shutoff valve. Water will now begin flowing into your home. Inspect both of the bypass valves for leaks as water is now flowing through them. If no leaks are detected, go ahead and turn off the bypass and allow water to begin to flush through your well water filter. The bypass can also be shut off on the softening tank to allow water to begin to flow through it as well. Allow water to flush through your system for about 10 minutes. Also note that it's common to see a small amount of sediment during this time. Each of the electronic heads will need to be programmed. This can be accomplished using a smartphone. In your app store, search for Legacy View. Once found, go ahead and install the application. Once installed, go ahead and open the app. Both heads should be powered and will show up on the device list. We will begin by setting the presets for the well water filter first, which is listed as aeration filter. To set the time on the unit, go ahead and tap on that tile. A prompt will ask you if you want to set it to the same time as your device. Go ahead and select OK. The regeneration time listed on the right hand column will also need to be updated. It is recommended to select a time when nobody is using the water in the home. In addition, the regeneration on the well water filter and the water softener cannot happen simultaneously. You will need to set times so that they stagger with one another. Therefore, it's recommended that you set the times of regeneration at least two hours apart. To change the time, simply tap on that tile. A prompt will come up to allow you to change the time. Since you will need to stagger the regeneration, 1 a.m. should work. The filter backwash frequency on the lower right-hand column will need to be updated. Go ahead and tap on that tile. On the screen that comes up, you will select five days. Then select OK. For the next settings, select the menu icon in the top left corner. Select the advanced settings option. The error charge frequency in the upper left hand side should be set to one day. If not, go ahead and select it. Go ahead and set it to one day and then select OK. On the right column, the backwash time should be set to 10 minutes. If necessary, update it and then select OK. On the left column, the option that says rest should be set to zero. If not, go ahead and correct that field. 
Air draw on the right hand side should be set to 20 minutes. If not, select it and update it. On the bottom left column, rapid rinse should be set to 5 minutes. If not, go ahead and update it. Your system can now be regenerated. Hit the menu icon in the upper left hand corner. Please note that the water regeneration will take about 45 minutes. During this time, you will not be able to use water to your home. Also note that the regeneration of this tank cannot happen at the same time as regeneration of the other tank. Therefore, the tanks will need to be manually regenerated one at a time. Once you're ready, go ahead and select Regenerate Now from the menu. Confirm the regeneration and it will run for about 45 minutes. To program the settings on the water softening tank, select the menu icon in the top left corner. On the menu screen, you will select Device List. The water softener will be listed as metered softener. To set the time on the electronic head, simply tap the time in the app. A pop-up will confirm that you want to set the time to the time that's on your device. Go ahead and select OK. The default regen time is set to 2 a.m. Since the well water filter is regenerating at 1 a.m., you will need to allow two hours before this system begins to regen. Tap on the regen time and then you will set 3 a.m. as the regen time. This will ensure that the tanks don't regenerate at the same time. Your water hardness will need to be set. If you performed a hard water test, then information would be obtained from that. If not, you can check with your water authority to get the information. To set it, you will simply tap on that tile. Then you will enter the appropriate value. Now you will select the menu icon from the upper left hand corner to gain access to the advanced settings. Tap on the advanced settings option. The regen day override in the upper right hand corner will need to be changed. Go ahead and select it and change the value to 14 days. The reserve capacity on the left hand side will also need to be updated. Select it and then change the reserve capacity to 10%. The last two settings will vary depending on the size of the system that you're installing. If you're installing the SS1 softener, you will need to change the resin grain capacity on the right hand side. The value will need to be changed to 32,000. The brine refill time on the bottom right hand corner of the screen will also need to be updated. Select it and then you will change the value to 8 minutes. If you happen to be using the SS4 version of the softener, the last two settings will be different. Select the resin grain capacity and you will change it to 4800. The brine refill time will also need to be changed. It will need to be increased to 10 minutes. The final step will be to force the system to regenerate. However, you should recall that the softener and the well water filter cannot regenerate at the same time. Since the well water filter was forced to regen on an earlier step, you should allow for it to finish before attempting to regenerate the water softener. Once the other tank is done regenerating, you can go ahead and force regenerate this tank and allow two hours for it to complete. And once again, you will be unable to use water to the home during this process. Select the menu icon in the upper left hand corner, and then you will select regenerate now from the list. Select OK from the following screen and the system will regenerate for the next 90 minutes. Once the regenerations are complete, you can begin using your system. Congratulations, the installation is complete.